welcome back. So, Henry James and uh, his position in American canon, in the American canon. So, James was born in 1843 and died in 1916. He was born in New York, one of the greatest American writer ever, almost the father of a modern American novel. He was educated at Harvard Law School and lived most of the time in Europe, even in his formative, during his formative years. Uh, during the first world war, uh, he expressed his ardent sympathy um, for England and was naturalized a British citizen in 1915. Born an American, became British in 1915. His major works are the portrait of a lady, the ambassadors, the golden bowl, wings of dove, the American, the Europeans, the Bostonians, Daisy Miller and he also wrote short stories and travelogues. His essay Art of Fiction is a classic now, I will be talking about that when many a time you will get your um, uh, some passages or extracts from that essay and a, a work of criticism the art of the novel is also extremely small. He wrote autobiographies or memoirs, a small boy and others, notes of a son and a brother, the middle years which was published posthumously. He also wrote a play, Guy Domville, which was not all that successful. Uh, and he also wrote a biography of Nathaniel Hawthorne, just titled simply Hawthorne, regarded as the greatest of all American literate uh, novelists especially. And uh, along with Melville and Walt Whitman, he is credited with the flowering of New York as distinct from the efflorescence of New England. His, uh, he was influenced by the works of uh, Henrik Ibsen, uh, Hawthorne of course, Turgenev, the Russian author, Balzog, Dode and Emil Zola, Flaubert, also George Eliot. Okay? So, many of these barring Nathaniel Hawthorne are Europeans and English authors. There have been a number of works on James, now that itself tells you how important and what is his position. So, um, Richard uh, Libman Smith has written The James Boy, The James Boys, a novel account of four desperate brothers, The James Boys. Uh, David Lodge has written a book on him and uh, Com Toybin, the award winning British writer has written The Master, not to be confused with the movie of the uh, same name, but The Master is the uh, uh, is a novel based on Henry James. And other writers who have written on him include Emma Tennant and Michelle Hens. Uh, he is known for his tentative and obscure style. He often felt and often said rather character is action okay and uh, this is a quote that i that has, is that is often attributed to henry james character is action remember that his subjective school or interior school of fiction sort of anticipates the works of james joyce virginia woolf and marcel prue he famously said that I have the imagination of disaster and see life as indeed ferocious and sinister. He also says we are each the product of circumstances and there are tall stone walls which fatally divide us. That is her, his world view, although a rich man, very successful author, but that is his world view. In James's novels, his uh, protagonists are generally robbed of one thing they desire most and what do they desire? A profound oneness with another, but this is something that is denied to them. His novels are full of uh, tension between certain types and individuals and he takes great delight in exploring these tensions what is a type and then busting the myth. The danger uh, uh, befalls those who are not fully self-aware and socially conscious, 
those who live delusional lives. His novels are mostly based in New York, London, Paris and Rome. Last class we did Herman Melville whose terrain was very different. James is a city man and he writes about where it's different kinds of people. He is a novelist of manners and social conventions. He wrote a, a short story called or novella called Washington Square, which, uh, which was adapted in a movie called The Heiress. Do uh, look, uh, look it up and see what people do to each other, how personalities and characters are transformed by one act of cruelty. Quite like uh, Jane Austen, but then uh, Jane Austen always lagged his penetrating psychological insight. So, James uh, like Austen, he focuses on a very narrow section of society, the rich Americans, aristocratic Europeans and then he also discusses and analyzes and probes into the relationships and thought processes. His characters are eloquent but self-destructive, innocent abroad, so that, that is one thing, you, you see that is a title of a novel by someone else, but the characters in James are always innocents abroad and who are the uh, innocents? The Americans, they are millionaires but repressed, they are aesthetes, they are refined, many characters are weak willed and then ultimately they have to face up to a moral responsibility. A great tension in his novels is between Americans and Europeans. For him Americans lack complexity and Europe is full of complexities. Americans are uh, you know you, you uh, see what you get there, but Europe is artificial with suffocating manners. People, Americans are innocent, Europeans are pleasure seekers. So, it is between these tensions that he generally works. His novella Daisy Miller is about a young American woman who is travelling in Europe. She is charming but reckless. She is not bothered, uh, she is not artificial enough to bother about her so called reputation and good name. We mostly see her through uh, her admirer Lord Winterburn's point of view. Because she is uh, so relaxed, so friendly, so cheerful, so charming, uh, her manners attract the wrong kind of attention. So, this is one um, kind of a theme that records in various forms in all, all the works of Henry James. He was majorly concerned with the, so the so called Judas complex. In all his works, he showed a uh, you know profound belief in man's capacity to overcome life's injust injustices by understanding and facing reality. He wrote, famously wrote, the portrait of a lady in 1909, which he describes as the conception of a certain young lady affronting her destiny. Now, what is affronting your destiny? Accosting your destiny, but then in what way? Characters are Isabel Archer, Ralph Touchett, Lord uh, Warburton, Caspar Goodwood, Gilbert Osman and uh, so on and of course, the famous Madame Merle. Now, those are the characters here and you can see he basically deals with the lives of the aristocrats, the rich, the lords, the ladies, the counts, the countesses. Um, I was telling you about the art of the novel, his work of criticism and the prefaces okay, of all his novels are extremely important. Now, remember one interesting thing about Henry James is when you read the preface to one of his novels, he hardly ever talks about the plot of the novel like uh, it is generally done. Other writers, novelists may try to uh, interpret or comment on their work, not James. When he writes his prefaces, he writes about anything but his current novel. Um, 
at one point or a, a, in one form James is believed to have presided over the transformation of the Victorian novel into the modern novel and laid the foundations of modern criticism of the novel, one of the greatest literary critic ever. His, uh, uh, one of his principal contribution to criticism is to make writers and critics conscious of the narrative method and the so called point of view. He maintains control through the third person narrative, however, readers um, also get the experience through the consciousness of the character, which is a very modernist feature, sort of anticipates stream of consciousness. Remember modernist novel, uh, uh, modernism has uh, some free, uh, some four preoccupations, one is complexities of its form representation of inner consciousness, sense of nihilistic disorder and also freeing the art from the determination of the plot. James's novels are indicative of all the features of the so called modernism. He calls himself a chronicler of his characters lives. So, they are very inward looking works, introverted novels. We often find a closeness between the author and his characters and characters assert deep psychological in depth. Critics have also called Henry James's world a Janus phase world, two phase. Okay? James agrees with Nietzsche's formula of the modern tragedy. There is an the conclusion is that we live in a paradoxical duplicitous world which is doomed to end tragically. In his preface to the golden bowl, he says the impersonal author uh, is present to give some near individual view of the business. Okay? So, the impersonal author and his deputy or delegate is present to give some near individual view of the business. It is important to understand that James is always interested yet detached. His characters go through plenty of interior monologue, something that, you open, that opened the door to modern fiction such as James Joyce's Ulysses. Okay? A refined version of this is called stream of consciousness technique that we will be doing plenty of which we are going to do soon in our subsequent classes. One work that I wanted to stress upon is the art of fiction, uh, which was published in 1884. He argued uh, here that the fullest possible freedom in the novelist's choice is that of theme and treatment. A novelist should be, should be given how he treats the theme and he should be given a complete freedom. He also marks a crucial shift of realist fiction towards so, Victorian novel realist and Jamesian novels a shift towards psychological realism and ultimately towards modernist fiction. Throughout he argues for the um, novel's significance okay, and not just an entertainment. In art of fiction he contends experience is never limited, never complete it is an immense sensibility, a kind of huge spider web of the finest silken threads suspended in the chamber of consciousness and catching every air bone particle in its tissue. It is the very atmosphere of the mind. These are the kinds of quotes that you may find for your exams. Constantly probing into the basic terms of the critical discussions of life, representation, experience, reality, plot, consciousness, famously says what is character but the determination of incident, what is incident but the illustration of character. Quite close to or you may also uh, compare with E. M. Foster and his aspects of the novel. Foster who wrote aspects of the novel in 1927, he discriminates between flat and round characters. Remember a flat character is a type, a stock, 
two dimensional flat character is presented without individualizing details can be described in a single phrase round character is complex in treatment and motivation represented with subtle peculiarities such a character is difficult to describe you can't say good or bad capable of surprising us likewise henry james gives us the notion of telling and showing characters in telling character the author intervenes in order to describe and to uh, comment on the motives and dispositional qualities of the character the way jane austen does in showing which is also called dramatic method readers have to interpret and infer what motives and dispositions lie behind what characters do james is quite close to flaubert in this gustav flaubert the great writer the of the great novel madame bovary both flaubert and james they consider telling you know to tell the uh, readers or the audience what to think is a violation of artistry and they recommend only showing characters and the writer's job is to write objectively and impersonally i am giving you all these terms they because they may uh, appear in front of you and you should be able to distinguish between who said what so foster talked about round and flat characters james talks about telling and showing characters james is also for example portrait of a lady can be seen as coming of age or bildungs roman kind of a novel which is a german term for formation novel okay and upbringing or educational novel refers to a novel which is an account of you the youthful development of its protagonists okay the best known example of bildungs roman uh, of course german novels and the greatest of them all gate's sorrows of young werther coming of age novel where there is a discovery a revelation and growth is complete so likewise daisy miller and portrait of lady portrait of a lady they can be considered james's version of bildungs roman remember innocence in james is constructed around a series of innocents innocent characters whose perception of the real is suddenly transformed in an epiphanic insight into an evil concealed behind the mask of social civilized aesthetic being the vision of james's characters is blinded by the personal and cultural innocence and this recognition awakens their conscious out of its submersion in mundane social realism or the lure of aesthetics james lived in london for several years before becoming the british citizen and he says london is on the whole the most possible form of life it is the biggest aggregation of human life the most complete compendium of the world you may may not agree with this but that's what henry james says he was fascinated by london's bustle and density and also depths of customs and manners and chose london as he was he considered himself an aesthet and a realist and he thought that's the best way uh, of life the best place to be and for more on uh, london and henry james you may, i recommend you re- read the notebooks of henry james which was published in 1947 and he says oh yes the united states a country without a sovereign without a court without a nobility without any army without a church or clergy without a diplomatic service without a picturesque uh, peasantry without palaces and castles or ruins without a literature without novels without cathedrals without sport without fox hunting or country gentlemen this is what he found in england united states had nothing what england had to offer him so again this praise uh, sort of you know differs from the theme the corrupt europe and innocent america but then the english people are always good most of the time in the english are uh, good people in james so when he talks about the corrupt and decadent uh, um, europeans england has a had a special place in his heart and it has to be exempted james also uh, has uh, his notion for art for art's sake 
So, um, now see we know that aesthetes they believed in crowding one's life with maximum sensations, okay. but in James he repudiates the art for art's sake mode in spite of living and depicting the lives of the extremely wealthy. But one thing you have to remember freedom in James is impossible without independence from money and materialistic things. The most important is um, uh, because we have already considered the new critics R. P. Blackmer who wrote uh, an essay Henry James in 1948. He observes that James's work constitutes a single anarchic rebellion against society, against the laws of society in the combined names of decency, innocence, candor, goodwill and the passionate heroism of true vocation. Remember, so we have already done uh, plenty of new criticism and therefore, uh, it is important to know what Blackmore has to say about Henry James. Although Henry James is not a new critic, remember that. Um, Henry James was extremely influenced by George Eliot, particularly her magnum opus Middle March. And if you read the portrait of a lady, you will find that uh, um, there is a lot of uh, indebtedness to George Eliot's Middle March and Daniel Deronde. Okay. So, um, like Eliot, James shaved uh, his men from the portrait of a lady to be uh, wealthy and influential uh, landowners burdened by tradition. Okay. And you find such characters in um, middle march also. And the second is there is an outspoken man of his time willing to ignore social conventions. So, you have Ladis law in middle march and the industrialist Goodwood in portrait of a lady, but then each heroine prefers the third suitor an older scholarly and aloof aesthet. So, there is a character of Casaban in middle, uh, middle march and Osmond in a portrait of a lady. Uh, James had reviewed Middle March very enthusiastically and he says of his heroine, Dorothy marries enthusiastically a man whom she fancies a great thinker and who turns out to be an arid pedant, just so does he have Isabel wed. Okay, so, that is what how he does, his heroine Isabel Archer also ends up marrying someone like uh, the kind of character that his heroine had married. So, uh, thank you very much and uh, in our next class we will be starting with uh, exercises based on American literature.